Yezu reveals three brand new VHF UHF radios. Two of them are mono band with more power than you might think. And one of them is a really cool looking dual band. Let's take a look at them right now. So this was sent to me by Vince, VE6LK, yesterday. He's like, hey, if you want to make a video about this, these were just announced. He goes, I'm not going to make a video, so feel free. So thank you, Vince. I appreciate, uh, appreciate that, uh, that heads up there. And uh, I will put a link to Vince's channel. He does a lot of build videos, CW type videos, POTA stuff on his channel. I'll put a link to it in the description below. And also I wanted to say really quick that after Googling these three model numbers, the top of the list of the Google list for me was the Gigaparts website. On Gigaparts, you can save a 10% discount on everything Mezzi and Poloni with the coupon code of HR2Cables. I will put that link in the description below as well. This video is sponsored today by Mezzi and Poloni Coax. Use Mezzi and Poloni when you're, if you, if you pick up one of these radios for a mobile install or for a man pack or whatever, use Mezzi and Poloni when you're feeding it to your antenna, wherever you might install it. It's great coax. All right, so here's Vince's Twitter page. He shared a link with me to his Twitter page. A trio of V UHF mobile radio announcements from Yezu just dropped. You heard it here first, folks. There's an FT3165 RASP, 3185 RASP, and a 150 RASP. RASP, I'm not sure what that is. But I wanted to, you know what? And, and I'm like, this is great. This is cool and all that, um, that he's showing me this, but he doesn't link to anywhere about these radios and i'm like okay where's he getting this this one kind of looks the face on this one the dual band kind of looks like a cross between the new uh the new qrp radio that they announced at the tokyo ham fair the screen kind of looks like this kind of a new design of the screen these other mono bands this is a 85 watt two meter and a 65 watt 440 and those screens look similar to what we've seen before but i wanted to i mean he didn't put any links to yezu i wanted to make sure this is legit not that i don't trust vince but i like to, uh, you know, just kind of look around. So I Googled all three of those model numbers and they all came up on the Gigaparts website right there. So let's look through these real quick. Again, two of them are mono band, which are higher power, and one of them is a dual band. I think I might be interested in the dual band myself, but I might also be interested in the mono band two meter because that would make a great radio for an RV to mount in your RV and leave it there when you go to RV parks and you want to talk on 6.52 or some of the local repeaters, you got an extra few watts to pump, punch out. So the 3165R ASP with new evolving Super DX and audio digital signal processor. Uh, let's see. This is a compact, yeah, 65 watt, 85 watt. Now I made a mistake. I thought that one was UHF. They're both VHF. Why would they do that? That's odd. So this one, this 3165 RASP is a 65 watt, 144 megahertz F FM mobile transceiver. Doesn't look like it's doing Yezu System Fusion. It's a compact two meter mobile transceiver with a solid basic features configuration and mechanical toughness. Kind of, this kind of looks like a, some of the commercial radios they make. The power output is 65 watts, selectable three power settings, 65, 30, and five. It's efficient cooling system with the FACC funnel Air convention conductor wind tunnel ensures stable and reliable power. Front firing speaker of 5 watts. The Super DX function increases the receiver sensitivity and improves weak signal reception. Okay, The new ASP audio digital signal processing unit is also activated when the Super DX key is pressed. The Super DX with the ASP ensures comfortable audio, um, audio quality of weak signals and expand, expands the communication range. I would be much more impressed with these uh, uh, weak signal radios if they were more than just FM only. I mean, pulling a weak signal out of FM is great. I've noticed over the last few months myself here in the North Texas area and while driving, there's been a lot more FM simplex activity here lately than there has, you know, in, in recent past. Maybe on 6.52 and maybe not on 6.52. There's another frequency here in town that, um, that gets used quite frequently. But it is, FM, it is two meter FM simplex, but I would be more impressed with these radios having a receive sensitivity, sensitivity and audio digital signal processing if they were all mode, single sideband, FT8, uh, CW capable. I'd be more impressed with that there, but okay, that's fine. Okay, yeah, the date is November 13th right there. You can see that. 
And then this one right here, and I kind of like, this kind of looks like uh, they're 28, 2980, 2580, 2980, 2780. I think they had two or three models there, the higher power. This is an 85 watt, delivers dependable, high performing 85 watts of transmit power. The massive heat sink with no something fan ensures, <laughs> my, my, my screen's covering it up. Reliable, solid, 85 watts of RF power, uh, four selectable settings, 85, 50, 20, and five watts. Super DX function increases the receiver sensitivity, improves weak signal reception. The new ASP unit is also activated when the Super DX key is pressed. Okay, Super DX with the ASP ensures reliable audio quality for weak signals and expands the range of communication. Cool. Okay. Now, in all things, a lot of times people will email me and they'll say, so what is the longest range radio I can get? And they want to know about HTs a lot, handheld radios a lot of times. What's the longest range handheld I can get? And I'm like, you know, range is two things. Range depends on your power. So a 10 watt handheld is going to get out farther than, than a 5 watt handheld. And a mobile base station radio with 85 watts and an external antenna is going to get out farther than a mobile or base station radio with 50 watts. Okay, so that's important. But your receiver is also important. If you're wanting to talk about two-way communications, your receiver is also important. So you need to be able to hear when someone comes back to you. So it's important that you can reach out and talk to people, but if you can't hear them coming back to you, then you can't communicate. So receiver sensitivity, and Yezu has some of the best receivers on the market today, in the HF world especially, so I'm excited to see how sensitive this receiver actually is. We might want to do some testing from the base station antenna here once I get one of these in my hand. This one also has the PNG primary memory group. Now, I use the primary memory group on my FTM 6000 all the time. That is in my Tech Prepper Man Pack. I take it with me. It's got 50 watts of power, dual band, VHF, UHF. It kind of looks, the screen kind of looks like this also. It's, it's kind of that blocky old style look with the monochrome. Cool. So I... Perhaps we will trade this up for the FTM 6000 for this new one, although this is just a uh, two meter only, so probably not. I like having the, the VHF, UHF, and one radio. So the program memory group basically says you can save up to five VFO or memory channels in a short little group, and you can change those easily. You go to the channel you want to save, VFO, memory channel, you long press the PMG button, it puts it into this list of PMG program memory groups, and then you can scan that, or you can just listen to one or two, you can quickly switch back and forth between five channel, up to five channels that you want to listen to. Makes it very convenient in the field, especially when traveling, and you're going to different repeaters at different frequencies. It also has the CFL customized function list, up to nine frequently used functions from the 44 menus can be registered and easily recalled. That's cool. So you can put in something like, um, Power, CTCSS, uh, switch back and forth between VFO and memory, switch back and forth between uh, VHF, UHF, customized function list there. Some other convenient features of the 318 RSP are large capacity of 221 memory channels available. 221 memory channels is really good for a monoband radio, VHF only radio. Alphanumeric, six character labels, that's kind of old school. Keypad entry. DTMF microphone, versatile scan features such as preferential memory scan, VFO scan, priority channel scan, and dual watch. CTCSS decode encode, separate transmit offset frequencies, RF squelch, enhanced paging and code squelch. Okay. 10 NOAA weather radio broadcast channels and a weather alert for the USA version only. So this could be your weather radio. You could monitor NOAA weather, you could monitor weather alerts, and you could listen to your local Aries Sky Warner Racy's repeater with that. Cool. Okay. This is the one I'm second most interested in. So if we go over here, this is the last one. And I really like this one. I think this is a great looking radio. Adjust the screen there a little bit. 55 and 50 watts. So that's already more than most of your dual bands are. 55 watts on two meters, 50 watts on 440. FM dual band mobile transceiver with the new evolving Super DX and audio digital signal processor. Pleased to announce that the new um, FM dual band transceiver, the FTM 150R ASP provides true dual band operation with two different receivers on different bands or within the same band. So it'll do VV, UU, VU, or UV. Full dot matrix display is graphically visible and provides a clear and crisp view of the radio operating status. Front panel is detachable, good, by attaching the um, optional swing head, model number there. Flexible angle adjustment is possible to accommodate easy mobile operation. So that tells me that you satellite guys are going to like this radio because it is true dual receive, 
true dual band. And it doesn't use the word full duplexing, but if it's dual receive, it should be full duplexing. True dual band operation with two different receivers on different bands or within the same band. So I'm pretty sure that means full duplexing. I could be wrong on that. I mean, kind of sometimes they word this kind of weird, but uh, but this right here sounds like it might be a great for a satellite radio. So we've got power output of 55 watts on VHF and 50 watts on UHF. That's really good. Four selections, 55 and 50, 25 watts on mid and or on, I'm sorry, three selections, 55, 50 on high, 25 on mid and five watts on low. Heavy duty heat uh, heat sink with uh, funnel air convection conductor ensure stable and reliable transmit power. The reason they keep saying that is because if your transmitter gets too hot, it's a lot of, uh, too, too hot. If it doesn't have a good cooling fan, a good fan, a good uh, heat sink or something like that, the power um, can come down. If you just kind of dead key and hold down the microphone and the transceiver or the radio starts to get hot, you'll see your power drop. Front speaker is furnished inside the control head. That's cool. Kind of like my FTM 500. Combination of the main body and the speaker provides six watts of high quality audio. 3-watt front speaker and 3-watt in the main speaker. Volume level of the main body speaker is adjustable relative to the front panel for the user's preference. Super DX, once again, primary memory group, once again. In manual mode, transmit receive stays on the manually selected channel. The signal received on the other channel is shown on the screen. The audio can be heard. Cool. So that, to me, it sounds like it is actually full duplex. So that's going to be good. I like the look of that radio. I really do. I like the look of that radio. I like that new kind of that newer style head. It's got the larger display. Some of, some people were upset about the smaller display of the FTM 500. This might be for you. It's not color. It looks like it's monochrome. It's black text on a on like an amber screen. Nothing on this uh, statement here saying whether you can adjust the backlight color. Sometimes you can on these radios. Sometimes you can't. But I think the important features that are here, like dual receive, true dual receive with two receivers, I think that's going to be much more important than a color display to most people, or at least to me. What do you think about this? I already saw all of these on the Gigaparts website. Here is the 65 watt version. I don't understand why they're doing one 2 meter 65 watt and one 2 meter 85 watt. Because when I first looked at this, I thought this was a UHF only radio. Because they used to have a UHF only FM and system fusion monoband radio and then they have then they had a two meter version of the same thing so they had a two meter monoband and a 440 monoband for fm sys, fm and system fusion and they discontinued those a while back but then this one right here uh so it's 274 for that 319 for that one and then the dual band is going to be about 419 but this is on the gigaparts website available for the end of no of of november 2024 right there move that over so you can see it and which is what this announcement from Vint, uh, that Vince put on Twitter also says. So there you go. Three brand new radios from Yezu. Which one might you be interested in and why are you excited about these? I've said, uh, I've said for the last four years, ever since COVID, Yezu keeps releasing radios, man. They keep releasing radios. They released five radios, 2020 to 2022, during COVID, during the decline of COVID, after the Japanese factory chip fire and all this. They've released five new radios during that time. They've released two or three or four new radios in the last year. Got some cool stuff coming from Yezu, so very impressed with that. Put a comment below. Let me know what you think about these three radios, and if you plan to pick one up, which one will it be? Check out these videos next, because YouTube thinks you want to watch those for some reason. 73.